is the story of a serial killer who thinks he is invincible as he never leaves anything behind that would lead the police to consider him a suspect. A police officer devotes himself to catching the killer, but no one is with him. Let's see whether he'll be able to pull it off. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2013 movie The Frozen Ground. It's time to recall. Let's get started, turn on subtitles, and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we're taken to Alaska 1983, where we see 17-year-old Cindy Paulson is handcuffed and screaming for help. We go on to learn that she has been kidnapped. Then we see a police officer who has managed to find the girl. The man, the man she is rescued by is an Anchorage Police Department patrol officer. The girl cries as the police officer saves her, and she also takes a sigh of relief. She is then taken to the hospital where the police officer comes to see her, and she goes on to tell him everything that happened to her when she got kidnapped. She is then taken to a police station, and they go on to interrogate her as well. They do not believe anything the girl tells them. She says that she was kidnapped and raped by a man named Robert Hansen. She adds that he raped her not once, but multiple times. Her clothes are kept for a rape kit. Because she is a prostitute and lying about her age, the detectives do not believe her story, refusing to even look into the man whom she named as her abductor. They go on to tell the girl that Robert Hansen is a respectable man, so the story she is telling them is not believable at all. They tell the girl that he is a family man, so they are not at all going to investigate him at all. On the other hand, when the officer who saved her gets to know about the fact that the detectives are refusing to look into her case, he loses his mind. He thinks that the detectives want to put the case away. The officer goes on to make a profile of this case on his own and sends it to Alaska police. We then see a helicopter of Alaska State Troopers. The helicopters land near the forest and it seems like an emergency landing. It turns out that they have found the dead body of the girl who has been killed and thrown there. There we see Jack who goes on to report the incident to his seniors. A girl has been shot four times and it seems like she was running away from her pursuers. As they investigate the case, it turns out that this girl went missing after she was last seen at a bar. They say that at the place they found the girl's dead body, it is impossible for anyone to drive a car there. They now suspect that the murderer took the girl to that place either via plane or boat. He says that they must be dealing with a serial killer as it does not seem like someone who does not know their way around what they were up to. Jack then goes on to receive a mail which has been sent to him by the man who rescued Cindy. When Jack goes home that night, he goes on to read Cindy's case and learns about Robert Hansen. He then investigates this name and ends up finding one of his case files. According to this case, Robert kidnapped a girl from a bar back in 1971 and he raped that girl after taking her to the woods. Robert was then sentenced to imprisonment for five years, but Jack is shocked to learn that the man was out of prison within no more than three months. Jack then goes on to ask one of his colleagues why this man is not on their suspect list. His colleague tells him that the case he is talking about is 12 years old, so they did not really give much attention to this person. Jack then tells the other officer to keep an eye on Robert. Jack then goes to see a lady and she tells him that her little sister has been missing for a long time. Jack is given the bracelet of a girl who has been kidnapped. Jack thinks this girl too must have been kidnapped by the same man or the same group. It turns out that the man has already kidnapped 17 girls. 16 of those 17 girls have already been confirmed dead. Jack then goes on to discuss the matter with a colleague and goes on to tell him that from the information they have gotten so far, this guy kidnaps girls aged between 17 to 25 years old. One common thing about every case is that all of those girls were told that they were going to get a lot of money when they were kidnapped. Jack then gets to see Sydney. Since she tells him that a man named Robert Hansen called her to his house for $200. She reveals that she thought that he was just a normal customer, but he forcefully took her hostage and kept raping her for many days. She says that he is an animal who does not know anything about kindness. She says the more she begged for mercy, the more she was tortured. She reveals that the man likes raping and killing young girls. Cindy tells him that one day when he was shifting her to another location, this is when she got a chance to run away and she took it. She tells Jack that she told everything to the detectives, but they do not believe her at all. On the other hand, in Anchorage, Debbie Peters gets picked up by a man in an RV for a photo shoot. Later, Hansen eats a quiet dinner at home. His wife and children are away, and Hansen relaxes in his trophy room, casually, casually ignoring Peters, who is chained to a post. She has urinated on the floor, and as she cleans up the mess with a towel, Hansen's neighbor enters the house to deliver a plate of food. Hansen warns Peters not to scream, and leaves the trophy room to greet his neighbor. The scene changes to Jack, who is putting all his efforts into creating a proper profile against Hansen. 
He tells his colleagues that the man has gone to jail twice already, but due to the lack of evidence found against him, he always manages to get away. He tells them that they found 11 dead bodies and the victims have been killed in the same way. He tells them that the bodies have been found around the lake in an area where no one can get through a car. The interesting thing is that Robert has a boat, so he could easily get to the secluded area around the lake and dump the bodies using his boat. They then receive a call and it turns out that another dead body has been found. The doctor tells them that the girl has been brutally killed. The girl has been shot in her crotch four times. The murderer also went on to cut her body with a knife after she was dead. That night, Jack finds himself unable to sleep as that dead body keeps coming to his mind, so he goes on to have a drink before he gets in bed. The next day, Robert takes Debbie on his boat to transfer her. He forcefully throws the girl into his plane and makes his way to the lake. In the meantime, Jack's colleagues come to see him and tell him that they have been keeping an eye on the suspect. He tells Jack that the man has a plane, which he takes out at times. The officer, however, tells Jack that they cannot keep watching him just like that, as they are going to have to take permission from their superior if they want to continue following him. On the other hand, Robert goes to land the plane near the woods. He frees Debbie in the woods and tells her to run. He tells her to run so that he could take a shot at her like a hunter from afar. As the girl runs away, he goes on to shoot her and takes her necklace. On the other hand, Jack is annoyed because he has not been able to find solid proof against the suspect, and on top of that, the higher-ups are not allowing him to do anything extra. He goes on to have another meeting with Cindy. She tells him that if her body was examined the day she was rescued, he would have found Robert's fluids in her body. She tells him that they did not listen to her when they had the chance, and now she has no proof against the man. Jack is upset at the behavior of his fellow officers as, because of their stupidity, many serious criminals get away and many people end up being victimized. That night, Cindy goes to a bar to strip dance and as she does that, she spots Robert Hansen sitting there. He also sees her and recognizes her. Cindy gets scared and starts running. Robert wants to kill her because he does not want to leave any proof behind. Robert tries to catch her, but the girl manages to get away and because of this, Robert is in a state of panic. He then goes on to hire a man named Carl so that he could have her killed as soon as possible. On the other hand, the girl just wants to leave the city as she has had enough. The girl, however, gets injured when she is drugged, so she is taken to the hospital right away. Jack comes to her in the hospital and Cindy tells him the whole story. Jack says enough is enough and he goes to the district attorney's office to have a search warrant against Robert. The superior, however, tells him that they have no solid proof against the man, so they cannot just search his house just like that. Cindy herself does not want to go in front of the court because she is under 18, and if the court gets to know that she has been in prostitution despite being under 18, she herself could get in trouble, so she does not want that. Jack, however, storms out of there after he tells his superior officer that how the hell are they going to find evidence if they're not even going to search the man's place? Carl, on the other hand, approaches Paulson's erstwhile pimp, Clayt Johnson, and offers to forgive his sizable debt if Clayt turns Paulson over to him. Clayt does not want to do it, but he has no other choice but to agree with Carl. Jack and his partner now constantly start keeping an eye on Robert's house, and after a while, Robert goes on to notice it as he spots them standing in the window of his house. He right away goes to his garage and picks up all his stuff through which he could be proven a serial killer. This is the stuff he kept after killing the girls. He puts all his stuff in the car and gets on his plane to fly away. Jack follows him, but he is in his car, so he is not able to follow him for that long. Jack then goes to the district attorney once again and manages to get a search warrant this time as he goes on to threaten the superior officer, saying that if he's not willing to give them a search warrant, then they are going to destroy his name as they are going to make it public that the district attorney refused to give them the search warrant against a legitimate suspect. The police officers right away make their way to the man's house, but they are unable to find anything of note. They then take him to the police station to investigate him, but Robert refuses to answer any questions asked by Jack. He rather has a smirk on his face because he is aware of the fact that he has already taken care of the evidence and now they are not going to be able to find anything against him. When Jack is unable to make him talk, he gets frustrated. He tells his officers to search his house again and tells them to especially look for the hidden places. When they search his house this time, they are able to find many hidden places and there they find many things which he has illegally. They go on to find a 223 caliber rifle, which no common man usually has. Jack says that this is the weapon that has been used to kill many victims in recent times. 
In the meantime, Robert's attorney comes to see him and tells him that the case against him is really strong because he has been found in possession of the weapon that has been used to kill many victims, and if the police are able to find even a single victim to testify, Robert is done. Jack then goes to see Cindy and tells her that she can relax now as Robert has been caught and has even managed to gather sufficient evidence against him. They just need to put the matter in front of the court now and Robert will be put in prison after or most probably executed after that. Under police watch at a safe location, Cindy slips away and returns to her life of prostitution. Clayt delivers her to Carl. When Clayt attempts to rob Carl, Cindy uses the opportunity to escape, with Carl in pursuit after killing Clayt. After making a call to Halcombe, Cindy is almost killed by Carl, but Halcombe rescues her just in time. Carl leaves her and gets out of there. Jack then goes on to show a map to the other officers. He tells them that they have found this map in Robert's house and there are many cross locations on the map. Jack says that they have found dead bodies in the locations which have been crossed on the map. That means, wherever Robert hid those dead bodies, he crossed that location out of his map. When they show this to Robert and go on to ask him about it, Robert gets pissed off and starts yelling at Jack, saying he's just accusing him of stuff he has not done. In the meantime, Robert is yelling at Jack. Cindy shows up at the station, and when he sees her, he loses control and ends up saying that he should have killed her when he had the chance. This is how he goes on to confess his crimes. On top of that, Jack uses a bracelet identical to one worn by one of the victims to trick Robert Hansen into thinking the police have found the evidence he's hidden in the bush. The bracelet, combined with the sight of Cindy in the interrogation room, enrages Hansen to the point that he incriminates himself. The epilogue states that Hansen confessed to the murders of 17 women and the kidnappings and rapes of another 30. He was charged with the abduction and rape of Cindy Paulson, and the murders of Joanna Messina, Sherry Morrow, Paula Golding, and Iklunta Annie. He was sentenced to 461 years plus life without parole, and with that, the movie comes to an end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click that bell icon to get new movie recaps.